In this video, we will show you how to replace your front wheel bearing on this Lincoln Navigator. This will be located behind your front wheels. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. Once you've done that, we're going to continue on to removing our center cover. On the center cover, you're going to find that you have a notch cut out where you can use a plastic trim tool and carefully remove it. We'll give this a quick inspection and set it aside. Once you've done that, continue on to removing each of your five 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have that out of the way, continue on with a small pry bar. We're going to push back each of the caliper pistons just enough that we'll be able to remove the entire caliper with bracket from the rotor. Come right in between this area. Once you have a little bit of movement from there, we'll continue on to our 18 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. We'll start by loosening the top mounting bolt, but leaving it in just a couple threads. Now we can remove our upper mounting bolt and remove the caliper from the brake rotor. Once you have that off of there, give your brake pads a quick inspection. If it looks like they're worn at an angle or damaged in any way, it's a good time to replace them. Set this aside putting no pressure on your flex hose. Now it's time to remove our brake rotor. It's important to have a look at the backside here. When you go to install this on the brand new bearing, you want to make sure that you clean down this mating surface. We'll set this aside for now. At this point, we can move along to where the axle nut will be located. On this application, you'll find that you have a cotter pin that holds this nut locker in place. Remove the cotter pin. Remove this and give it a quick inspection. You will be reusing it. Remove this and give it a quick inspection. Move along to removing your 36 millimeter axle nut. Continue on with a hammer and punch. We'll put the punch right in the center and break the axle free from the wheel bearing. Once you're sure you have movement from this area, you can continue. Now let's make our way to the back side of the knuckle. We're going to be looking for the ABS wire. For this, you'll find that you have an eight millimeter headed bolt holding it to the steering knuckle. Remove that mounting bolt. We'll give that a quick inspection and we can set it aside. Continue following the ABS wire up. You'll find that it has two areas that it connects onto the brake flex hose. Separate the two.
Now the next thing you would want to do is follow the ABS wire up and behind the fender liner. Looking from the outside here, you can see that you have two tabs that protrude outward. That's exactly where the ABS wire connector is. I'll use a small pry bar, get up in between this area to separate it. Now we can pull that down and we can have a closer look. On this, you'll find that you have a little push tab. Squeeze that in and separate the connector. Every time you disconnect an electrical connector, take a peek. If you see any funny colors, that's corrosion and it would need to be dealt with. Make your way to the back side of the steering knuckle. At this point, we're going to remove our three 15 millimeter headed mounting bolts that hold the wheel bearing to the steering knuckle. Once you have that out of there, we'll continue on to the other two. The next thing that we will do is move along to using a hammer. We're going to carefully use this to break the wheel bearing free from the knuckle. When you do it, be extremely careful that it doesn't pop free and potentially hurt you. Once you have some movement from that, go ahead and remove it from the knuckle. Keep in mind, you do still have an ABS wire attached to the back of the wheel bearing that needs to make its way out between the knuckle and the backing plate. There it is, friends. All right, so now that we have that wheel bearing out of there, it's time to make sure that we clean up the steering knuckle and the axle, all the mating areas that the brand new wheel bearing will sit against. After it's clean, give it a quick inspection. Assuming it looks good, continue on with some copper never sees along all of the mating surfaces. Before we continue with the installation, make sure you clean and inspect all of your hardware. Okay friends, now it's time to install our brand new front wheel bearing. As we do this, let's make sure that we put our ABS wire through the proper area. Bring this into place, aligning all three of your mounting bolt holes. With that in place, we can start in each of our mounting bolts. We'll call it your prerogative if you want to use some thread locker. Once you have all three of them started in, snug them up. Once they're snug, torque them to 148 foot-pounds.
Let's move along to the back side of the knuckle with our ABS wire. We'll get this into place and put our mounting bolt into position. Start it in by hand so you're sure it's not cross-threading and then make sure it's nice and snug. Let's continue mounting that ABS wire, making our way up the flex hose. Once you have that in position, bring the ABS wire up and through your upper control arm and reconnect it to the wiring harness. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's completely secure. Now we'll put this up and inside the fender liner, making sure that we align our two tabs and pressing them into position. Make sure everything's secure. The next thing that we will want to do is coat the mating surface of our brand new wheel bearing. We'll use some copper never seize. Now that we've done that, it's time to make sure that we clean the mating surface on the back side of the rotor, the area that's going to go directly against that brand new wheel bearing. To clean this, you can use a wire brush or a sanding disc. make our way all the way around. Now that that's clean, let's install it on the bearing. Take one of your lug nuts, mount it up against the rotor, holding it in place. Now it's time to reinstall the caliper. As we put this in place, make sure that the brake flex hose is not twisted. We'll slide this right over that brake rotor and align our two mounting bolt holes. Continue on to starting in each of your caliper bracket bolts. After you have them both started in by hand, snug them up and then torque them to 136 foot pounds. Continue on to your axle nut. If you're reusing this, it's a good idea to make sure that you use some thread locker on the axle threads. Make sure you bottom this out by hand. Once you have this snugged up, you're going to torque it to 221 foot-pounds. That's easiest to do if you are closer to the ground. You can use a pry bar coming safely across each of these studs, making sure you're as flat as possible so you do not damage them. We'll bring this down at an angle to the ground. Now it's time to put on the nut lock. You'll find on this you have several slots making their way all the way around. That's for the cotter pin to go through. Looking at the axle shaft, you'll find that you have a hole that goes straight through it. Go ahead and align that hole with the slots on your lock. Slide your brand new cotter pin through there and peen it over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on you while you're driving down the road. Remove your lug nut. Now at this point, we can reinstall the wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and snug them up.
Once all of your lug nuts are snug, put your wheel back down on the ground. Torque each of the lug nuts to 150 foot-pounds. Torqued. Install your center cover. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, hop inside the passenger compartment and pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. After that, take it for a road test down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.